Hi, good morning guys, thanks for joining me. Well, I thought we were doing today's video, I've had a few requests just regarding sharpening and sharpening kits. So what I thought we were doing today's video is just actually just run through the sharpening kits which I do like to carry. Some of those are going to be the field sharpening kits, the others are going to be things which I do use in the house. And then from that we can just follow on just by doing a future video just regarding sharpening knives, axes and all the kind of things that are used for wood carving. So what I've got laid out in front of me here, a few of the things which I like to use on a regular basis. And like I mentioned, some of this stuff I do keep in the house, things like the water stones and the likes, and some of it I do bring out into the field. Now some of the questions which I do get asked on a regular basis is what do we use on my knife, what do we use on my axe, what do we use on the hook knives and that kind of thing. So like I mentioned you know, in this video we're just going to run through all the individual items. Hopefully I'll be able to just give you a few directions where to get the things from if you're looking for them. And then also like I say we can just move on and actually do a future video just about the sharpening. So we just start off with a small little kit which tends to come out with me the majority of the time and that's a sort of field sharpening kit here. Now in here there's around about four items and these are the kind of things used on my knives and also on my axes. Stored away in a nice little canvas pouch like this, it means I can keep all the items together. It just means that I can store it away in a rucksack and it's always at hand. So the items which I carry in the kit and like I say there's only around about four in total and one of those I don't tend to use so much anymore. So just starting off with probably the, uh, the things which I do use the most. And that's just a small little diamond plate here. 1000 grit on one side, 180 on the other. The 180 is perfect for removing chips and the likes. And the 1000 is just to finish that edge off prior to putting it onto the strop. So when people refer to the fact about sharpening and honing, when he says that you're using stones and plates, you're then sharpening and then finishing the edge off, you're then owning on the strop. So when I do say to people I am to actually put the knife on a uh, stone, you know, for around about four to five months, some people say, well, you know, how do you keep it sharp? You'd be surprised, you know, just by stropping. Oh well, it does maintain that edge. The other things which I do carry is a uh, little DC4. I don't tend to use this so much anymore. Since buying that other little plate there, I do tend to find it works a lot quicker. And also, that thousand side is a lot smoother. But you know, for the money, it's worked, it's, uh, you know, it's worked well. It's also been, you know, a good little stone to carry. And again, you know, just carrying it as a backup. It just means anything, anything happens to the other stone, I've always got this at hand. And then the last thing is just a little little pen of oil here, this is ballastol, again you know it's food safe, perfect for protecting all your steel works, knives, axes and all that kind of stuff, it's also got uh, a lot more other uses. So just keeping it in this little bag like I say, it just means anything be stored away, it's always at hand, I can always just keep them edges at uh, you know, a good working order. So just running alongside the field sharpening kit, I've actually got a couple of items here which have been designated for axe work. One of those is a little file, this is made by Alco Work or Alco Work have had them made for them. Made over in Germany, so single cut on one side, double cut on the other. So on the single side just removing burrs, any small chips and the likes on the double side, or well, the double cut is obviously for removing more material. So again, you know, like I mentioned, I could use the 180 stone on that little diamond stone, but just using the file. It's just going to make that work a lot quicker. And then just here, I've got a Granthus Brook axe puck. Very expensive for what they are. They're around about £40. And also, again, is around about a two inch diameter stone. So, what we've got is coarse on one side, fine on the other. And then the idea behind this little cup here is A, to protect the stone in transit, but also just going to protect your fingers. So, just starting off just with the fine side, you just remove one of the sides there, obviously exposing the finer grit, which is a 600 grit. And then just turning this over. And just removing the other cup there is going to expose that coarser side. And that coarser side is a, is a 180 grit. But like I say, you know, very expensive for what they are. It is going to come in handy. I was actually given this as a, as a birthday gift the other week. So if it is I was going to buy one, you know, I'd probably send it back. You know, you're far better really just getting something like a Japanese whetstone. You can actually pick these up for now for around about £25. And you can actually just cut those into three sections or you could cut it into a single section. And make sure you've got a longer section there for your knife and then you're going to get three for 20 pounds instead of one you know for around about 40 pound in cost so when it comes to a few of the bigger jobs which we may have to do or perhaps i'm just announcing perhaps a little bit of work which i may actually done out in the field then when i get in i always put them on the japanese water stones so these stones themselves are just used purposely for knives so that way then 
I can keep them nice and flat. But with them being a softer stone, they will dish over time. So what you can actually do is just use another stone and just rub it over the top just to make sure that that profile is nice and flat. But you can actually get something called a flattening tile and use it in exactly the same kind of way. So these two here, these are dual stones. So we're uh, dual grit on each one. It'd be nice to have the full sizes, you know, and the full uh, the full blocks. But you know, just keeping the cost down. This is the way which I've had to go. So this one here is a thousand and a six thousand, and the other one is a three thousand and an eight thousand. It's not very often I go up to the eight thousand. I probably just go up to the three thousand, strop it, and then I call that done. And then I use them in conjunction with the Naguda stone. Again, just another little wet stone or another little water stone, should I say? Just soaking them down in water. You can then actually just rub it on the surface. On this one, I'll probably go something onto the six thousand. That's going to create more of a slurry for us. And with that being said, then. It's going to polish and also cut that material down a lot quicker. So running alongside the water stones, another set of stones which I like to use from time to time, the carbonidium stones, certainly a lot cheaper to buy, I think this one was around about £10. Nice fine grit on one side and a coarser side on the other. And these are the kind of things that I use in the workshop, you know, just for sharpening down shears, lawnmower blades, or if it is, I've got, you know, removed quite a bit of material from an axe, and I'd probably use this before going onto the whetstone. Tend to be just a little bit more heavy duty, they don't wear down as much. And again, you know, with that being said, you know, they don't uh, sharp quite as fast. If you notice, I've actually got a pair of gloves on, these two here, I actually picked up. You know, second hand, I think I paid around about £2 for them. And unfortunately, they'd actually had oil put on them in the first place, so that's something which I've got to maintain doing, is by using oil on these for sharpening. And uh, this stone itself has actually kept in the same bag and has now started sucking up some of that oil. So it is that you're going to be using these kind of stones. You know, water is the way to go, in my opinion. It keeps the stones clean. You know, you can dry them off. You can clean all the metal out with water. And again, you know, using oil, that's all that's going to be used on these now. You know, so I can't bring them out without having to bring a pair of gloves with me. Just showing you this one here, this one was a water stone at some time. And there, what I was mentioning about, you know, is how soft they are. I'm not sure you can actually pick the camera, the camera can pick that up there. But if you notice just how thick it is at one end, how thin it is at the other, this is the end result from actually, you know, using these on axes. For those of you which may be looking for the high grit ratios, but perhaps you don't want to be spending 20, 30, 40 pound on Japanese water stones, then in my opinion, you can't be good old fashioned wet and dry paper. In this bag here, I think it goes up to around about 1500, so a nice fine grit, you know, which is going to get them edges really, really sharp. And what I've actually done here, I've actually just put them on some fine boards, and these are quite thin boards if you wanted to. You know, you can use the full sheet of paper that way, then, you know, you could use that on your belt knives, your axes, or whatever it is that you're going to use it on. These ones in particular, I've actually made them more for your wood carving tools. The little wood carving knives sharp, not really well on these, and also just using that inside edge, it just means I can actually get on the inside of a loop knife just to take down any small little burrs. And that just brings me on to the strops. Now when it comes to stropping, like I mentioned, it's one of the things which I do the majority of the time. I tend to put a knife on a strop before putting it onto the stone. And again, you know, if you can own your knife and keep that edge razor at all times, it just means then you haven't got to start taking a lot of metal away by using the stones themselves. So as you can notice here, I've got a few different types. Paddle strops, I've got a long strop, and I've also got a cylindrical strop. So things like the paddle strops, this is a double sided one, so we've got uh, the furry side or the hairy side, and then we've got uh, a smooth side just on the other side. And this one here I tend to use again on carving knives, on belt knives and that kind of thing. Brilliant little strop, we just start off just on the, uh, on the air side, and then if we wanted to turn it over. And that would really finish the edge off just by using the smooth leather. Now the compound which I use, I tend to use one nowadays, and that's Tormac. You know, every now and again I'll use auto solve very similar kind of thing. It does sharpen the edge really, really quick, and there's also a compound in it which coats the metal, which helps just to stop it from rusting. Now one thing which I come across is this leather strop. It's not a compound, I think they call it a paste. And inside it looks very similar to something like mink oil. And what the idea behind that is, once you've actually cleaned your strop, you can actually coat it just in the dressing here. And then what it does, it nourishes the leather, just like you would if you're doing a pair of boots, because some of this compound actually dries the leather out and starts it cracking. So the different shapes, like I say, for different things. The longer strop here, I tend to use more on my belt knife. I just like the longer length. It just means that I can get, you know, pretty much all the edge done just in one sweep, as opposed to doing it in just little sections. And again, just with the larger paddle strop here, or the wider paddle strop, I tend to use this more with axes and hatchets. It's just a nice size, it's quite wide, it covers the majority of the bit. Just doesn't 
stropping away and when it comes to stropping if you push away from you there's no chance of actually cutting into the leather and that's exactly what you've got to do I should have mentioned really with the wet and dry paper it's actually put it, push it away as opposed to pulling it back and cutting into the uh, cutting into the leather or the wet and dry paper and then the cylindrical shape one there I tend to use just on the little hoop knife and then it's a nice shape just to be able to get inside and just take down any birds that you may have had or created you know whilst it's on the stone or whilst it's on the wet and dry paper or again every now and again just giving it a quick strop while maintaining and just bring that edge back when it is I'm doing any kind of carving and then that just brings me on to the last few things which I carry inside the sharpening kit just starting off here with an eraser this is a freebie which had to come with the diamond plates obviously you can pick these up for pennies just after as it seems I thought I'd just have a look on Amazon just see how much they're charging for these kind of things and I think they wanted something like four to five pound so before spending that money, you know, if you want to clean your plates up, probably just go to the stationery shop, you know, and just buy yourself something a lot cheaper. Like I say, this was a freebie with the plate. And the idea behind it is once you've used the plate a few times, if you just give it a quick rub over, you can actually just start seeing that plate going from a dark grey back to its silver colour as it is it's cleaning any kind of swarf and metal just off the plate itself. So worth a little thing, you know, having, just going to keep this plate in good condition. And then just running alongside that, there's a little bottle of lapping fluid. And the idea behind the lapping fluid is you put a couple of drops on the plate, then it works just like any other kind of solution, would, whether it's water or oil, you know, on your general stones. It's going to help, you know, just remove any kind of swarf and just keep this plate clean. So that's a, a good little thing with the carry. It does evaporate after around about half an hour, so these plates are nice and dry when you're putting them away. Another thing is the, uh, the Sharpie Magnum perfect for marking the edges on knives and axes you know a lot of people think that's a beginner's way of sharpening but the beauty of it is it shows if you've got any inconsistencies in the stone you know the marks will still be there you know once you've actually passed the knife over the stone itself and the last little thing here is a fiberglass pen this isn't much for sharpening but it's just for maintaining the metal just getting rid of any kind of rust spots and that kind of thing you can pick these up from uh, car repair shops them kind of places Alfred sell them for around about four to five pound and all you get is a fiberglass bristle that comes out and then just using it just on any kind of marking staining rusting that kind of thing it soon cleans that up like I say nothing to do with the sharpening but it's just more about keeping that metal nice and clean So there we have it, just a quick look inside the sharpening kit. I hope that's clarified a few of the questions which people have asked. What I will be doing, like I mentioned, I will continue the theme just by showing you a little bit of sharpening, just by using all the stuff which I've actually brought out with me. If it feels like I've rushed the video a little bit, I do apologise. It's around about minus one, minus two, and we've got quite a cold breeze which has been blowing through the camp all day. And this battery light's been flashing on and off now for the past hour. So like always, I'll just leave me to say thanks a lot for stopping by and watching the video, like always. Until next time, you take care, and I'll see you again.